Hi, I'm Gordon Waite. I'm about to start rough polishing on this 20 inch f4.5 quartz mirror. Uh, I poured a 15 inch pitch lap to use for the rough polishing and it's been cold pressing on this mirror for a couple of hours. Uh, I've got it stacked with weights. This is the pink part here is the pitch lap. It's pitch on top of a dental plaster base. And then I've got weight stacked on it. Uh, 25, 50, 60, 65, 70 pounds total. And like I said, it's been on there a couple of hours. Now I split the cold pressing into two parts. This particular mirror blank has a hole in the center. So I did the first press with the two mirrors or the two discs concentric with each other uh, to put that hole in the middle of the of the uh, uh, pitch lab. And then uh, I did about uh, three quarters of the pressing that way. Then I moved the stack over a little bit and then pressed some more. Uh, to flatten out uh, what's probably a little bit of a hill there where the pitch lap probably went down into that hole just a little bit. So I'm trying to not have any damage built up from the hole in the center. So we're done pressing now. So and if you've done a good job with, uh, pre with the cold press, this should be hard to get off. It should stick quite a little bit. <clears throat> and then it popped loose and move it to the side. And there's a look at our pitch lap. Uh, this is a pitch lap, again a 15 incher. It's got uh, nearly half an inch of pitch on it. And uh, it's been channeled uh, in a previous video that we did. And I'm going to prop it up now and get it ready to go. Uh, a couple things to note. On my turntable, I've got lettering around the outside. And that's so that I can index the position of the mirror. I'll rotate the mirror around here. right here in the front of the mirror I put a little uh, red dot and I've lined up the red dot with the letter A on my turntable and what do I do I uh, polish in short segments I go about 20 minutes of polishing and when I'm done with that I'll resurface my pitch lap a little bit and I'll move the mirror on top of the turntable and what I do is essentially just pick a random letter between A and N and uh, change the little uh, red dot to go to that letter and once I've used a letter, I don't use it again until all of the letters have been used up. Uh, that helps get rid of any uh, problems that you could uh, have with astigmatism on the mirror. Uh, the other issue, I have four hold downs that keep the mirror in position. I've carefully centered the mirror here uh, to have as little run out as is practical. And I mark two of them with tape. And what I do is that those are the two hold downs that I'll take off when I need to take the mirror off the turntable. I'll leave the other two hold downs in place and that way I'll be able to put the mirror back and reposition it exactly uh, in the same spot and I won't have to recenter the mirror with every one of my 20 minute sessions. The thing that I do before every session is I take a brass brush. Uh, this brass brush has a one inch by two inch uh, surface and I just scrub the mirror with quite a little bit of pressure. The point here is to use the brush to scratch the mirror, or excuse me, to scratch the pitch lap, uh, and it's a form of microfacity. And then I hose it off. You can see the brown juice comes off. That's what you want to see. And I'll actually tip it up a little bit, hose it off. And now that goes right back on the mirror. Okay, now I've moved my overarm uh, gantry back over the mirror and I had the position of it marked previously so I know this is the position I need this to drop the uh, shaft down through it to uh, con connect up with the pitch lap and post it and hold it in one place to spin. So this top overarm is now in the right place. I'm going to put a little bit more cerium oxide on the mirror. Uh, the first session I do, I want to have plenty of cerium oxide on there uh, in that you want to have some lubrication and uh, for this first session you just kind of want to smooth things out and not make any effort to do anything fancy. So I've got plenty of cerium oxide on there, now it's time to put the pitch lap up. So I've got the pitch lap on there and now I want to feel and see what it feels like. And it should be really smooth, but it should have quite a little bit of friction when you move around on the mirror. And that's exactly what I have. You always want to have that perfect feeling. If it doesn't have that feeling, you don't start polishing. You press it and brush it until you have that feeling. 
Now I'm going, going to put some weight on top of here. Uh, with rough polishing like this, you can use quite a little bit of weight. I'm going to use about 50 pounds to start with, and that will speed up our polishing operation. Okay, so I've got 50 pounds on there. Now we slide it back under and drop the post back. There we go, and on with the machine. Now I wait just a few minutes to make sure the pitch lap is acting okay. This one is just a little bit jerky. We'll see if that uh, smooths itself out right away. And then I'll roll the speed up here a little bit. So the machine's now set for about, uh, oh, I guess that's about 35 RPMs. I'm using a 15 inch pitch lap. I've got 50 pounds of weight on there. I'm indexed so that the spot on the mirror is at the point A. And I'll start the timer now, and I'll run 20 minutes in this uh, configuration, and then I'll stop and see how the polish is progressing on the mirror, and then decide what to do next. You can see the pitch lap is already stabilized. It's now spinning true at a, a nice speed. And again, the motion of this pitch lap is solely caused by the turning of the mirror on the turntable. It's the friction with the outer edge of the mirror and the outer edge of the pitch lap that causes the spinning of this whole top unit here. Now the point of gross polishing is only to remove the pits from the mirror. We want to get the mirror completely polished out, get rid of all the pits, and that's why we're running at such a high speed with so much weight. And then after it's polished out, or just slightly before it's polished out, I'll start altering this technique, slowing it down, perhaps using a little less weight, and uh, that will help to smooth up the mirror and get it ready for uh, deepening and figuring. Okay, we're coming up on the end of the first 20 minute session here. <clears throat> so I'm getting ready to stop the machine and end it first thing I always do is to make sure it's really wet. When you stop a session, uh, you don't want the cerium oxide to, uh, the moisture to evaporate. Uh, the cerium oxide will leave a film on the mirror if, you, if it gets dry. So I wet it down good and we'll power it down. Basically I just use bounty white paper towel Wipe it down. There. And if I move around here to where the light is, you can see that the mirror is now reflective. And if I get it just right here, we'll be able to actually see the light. Now, uh, up in the ceiling here, I have overhead fluorescent light. And on the surface of the mirror, you can see that it now reflects this, that light. And what I'm doing here, I'm making that light reflection go from the center all the way out to the edge. And you can see that I'm getting a nice even polish there. That reflection is pretty even right from center all the way out to the edge, which means that I'm uh, pretty much sitting on the sweet spot for polishing. I'm getting about an equal polish from the center to the edge. And that's what I want to achieve. So uh, very good progress on this mirror for a first session. I'm really happy.